Ruth Fahey is with us. Ruth, good morning to you. Good morning, guys. How are you? Yeah, good. that was um, a pretty interesting game. <laughs> I feel, you know, <laughs> if you want excitement, uh, come to the Irish Women's National Team. 2-0 up, suddenly 2 all. It's like, oh, Jesus, what's going to happen here? But um, grind it out, 3-2. Sometimes victories like that are actually more important than a routine 2-0 would have been. A hundred percent. I suppose that's one way you could definitely look at it. And I suppose the fear was there. Um, we've seen before with the Irish team has gone one or two up, conceded goals, and in addition to that, conceded really poor, sloppy goals, which was the way last night as well. We've seen the heads go down, and we've seen them capitulate in the past. But what was so refreshing and so positive about last night was that they went out in the second half, and they still continued to go for it. They still played the same way they played in the opening 25, 30 minutes of the first half. They didn't sit back, they didn't absorb the pressure. That's what they would have done in, in the past. But we've heard Vera Powell speak in the run to the game that she wants to work their strengths. And the strengths of the likes of Katie McCabe, Denise O'Sullivan, Rihanna Jarrett is to attack, get on the ball and utilise what they can do. And um, So that was really refreshing. And because of that, they forced the error, they forced that own goal in the opening stages of the second half. And at that stage at 3-2, like I said, we've seen that fall away before. But they managed a hold relatively solid and going into the final 10, I didn't feel they were going to concede again. So, like you say, like you can get so many things from that, the resilience that they showed. And, and the main thing for me was the positive play for the majority of the game. Really, really refreshing. I think, too, um, when you change managers in the middle of a, a competition like this, there has to be a little betting in period, and that's the betting in period now for the new manager. She's seen what the team can do. They've come through the other side, and again, like she now knows exactly what the team need to work on for the next time. Yeah, exactly, and you've got to give Vera Powell massive, massive credit. She's had such limited time to prepare the team, and to come in in the manner that she did, literally at the pinnacle of the, of the, of the group, where this is literally the most important game in the opening five games. If you're looking ahead, you're looking at Greece in November, Greece again after that in Montenegro. So really you're looking at wins, three wins in a row. And then you've got Germany twice and Ukraine again with Germany at the very end. So really you we want to go into that German game at the very end, having known you've done all you can to secure that best second place position. But for Vera Pau to come in, she's had, I think she had a week of training with the girls. Um, I thought the first 11 that she picked was really, really solid. It showed kind of expertise that she had garnered from all the people that she had consulted around her. She'd spoken to Colin Bell, Tom O'Connor, Eileen Gleason has come in and given her all the information I think that we need. And you could see that relationship already fostering last night. Gleason and Powell look really close. Like there were really nice scenes, just hugs, just just pure celebration as well. They didn't hold back. It was really nice to see. But I think her selection was perfect. I think that bringing in Megan Campbell for Harriet Scott showed a really prudent decision. I thought Campbell was actually standing out. A lot of credit went to the likes of Denise O'Sullivan, Katie McKay, Brianna Jarrett, I thought Campbell was really solid at the back as well, but uh, hopefully, did you guys get to see, did you see Rihanna Jarrett in action? It's probably the best game I've ever seen her play, regardless of whether it's Westwood Youth or Ireland or whatever, she was absolutely superb. Yeah, and ends up with the reward of the goal as well, um, with an assist for the first one, the goal for the second one. The first goal is like a real thing of beauty. Yeah, 100%. Um, and it's those moments, like we've seen that in flashes, and I mean minor flash in the last campaign, as we all remember Colin Bell, had his plan, he wanted to have a campaign where they just completely solidified their defensive ability and then flashed of attack. But we saw that in a, in a lot more abundance last night, and it was that first goal. Denise O'Sullivan got a bit of space, as she always does, picked out a beautiful pass for Jared on the left. Jared wouldn't be renowned for her pace, but she looked pacey last night. She's got a spring in her step, pulled it down the left and pulled it back perfectly for Katie McCabe, and literally the person he wants fall on their left boot, and she just sliced it, sliced it into the corner. and. From there, Rihanna seemed to push on. Like, I don't know if people listening in are, are aware of Rihanna Jarrett's story. She's had three ACL injuries. She had those three injuries by the age of 22, which is outrageous. Like, she's, she's 25 now. She bounced back last year with her, her very first year of a full season of fitness. And with that, she scored 27 goals in the Women's National League, went on to claim Player of the Year. And now she's actually pushing on. She, you can literally see her in her prime and her confidence grow as the game went on. She was involved in all of the goals. She got one main assist second indirect assist and of course got the second goal and she completely deserved it uh, it was just yeah it was, it was actually really emotional emotional just watching her 
claim that player of the match award and, and watching her in the interview after is just absolutely so happy for her and so proud of her as well. So look, we, we should talk about the crowd. It's, it's a great thing that um, everybody took up their tickets. It's a terrible thing that there was 2,000 empty seats when there was clearly demand because I actually know some people uh, who wanted to go to the game were like, oh, this is sold out, I want to go to the game, but it's sold out and I can't get a ticket. I don't know, like, it's a quantum leap forward to have Five and a half thousand people there, and by all accounts, Niall, you were saying your mate was at it, and the atmosphere was great. Yeah. So we just yeah. need to get to a situation where you can trade your tickets if you're not going to use them, or don't take up the allocation if you don't want it, because it's clear that there is demand for this now. Exactly, complete nail on the head. Like, and you know, I, I won't deny it. I was really pissed off just looking around at the crowd last night because in the last couple of days we've had all this. I suppose publicity about this 8,000 capacity sellout, it's going to be a massive record. Of course it was, we had 5,328 and that's huge in itself, but I'm, like, I'm trying to get my head around and understand how the system actually works. They said 8,000 sold slash claimed season tickets, so is it a fact where people actively claim it or is it a default position? If you don't claim it, then your ticket is gone because I saw on Twitter, like not, not even individuals, but we had the likes of managers with underage clubs with 20 girls that wanted to go and they've asked the FBI for tickets and couldn't get them. And um, I saw that a couple of times on my Twitter feed. Like, it has to be looked at. And we heard Vera Powell, she called it a shame and that we need to think about it a different way. And it just, it just has to be re-looked at because as you say, with a game like that, a huge three points, the next home game against Greece is next year. People are going to want to go. And if they start to publicise this as a sellout again, people are going to start to become sceptical. So it just needs to be really clear mm. what's the allocation for season Good tickets, what are, what are the tickets for sale. And even at this stage, looking at bumping up prices or whatever, like it's just a different tra strategy that needs to be embraced this way. But that was a real shame. That's not to take away. It was a record 5,328 5, people there. And I think what you're saying, that, Ruth, it is strategy. This is strategy that's required and not just on the... Yeah. You can see some of it is working. You know, the, the mm -hmm. idea is like I... The, the, even though there was issues with tickets, there was a buzz on my, say, my social media last night, stuff like that, and that, that is growing and there is progress there, but the strategy is... is it seems to be that that is just it's not it's not it's not acceptable. There's many tickets three two 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 and a half thousand that didn't 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 actually turn up that were sold out sold out. It's same even in music, they do this thing where they go, oh, the gig is sold out, and people go, oh, I can't get a ticket, and then no one turns up, and then you go, well, where's where's everybody? Yeah. <laughs> this is horrible, and, and it and it does it can that can that can, that can affect the mindset of a team or a player, or especially the new coach coming in. Well, I think of the difference of an extra two thousand voices. All clearly Irish people, not Ukrainians, yeah. who are shouting for Ireland. It's an extra fifty percent of the atmosphere again, which is already good. I, I, it makes them, it makes it, but also it's it's this idea, it's the momentum that needs to build because, like at the end of the day, at elite sport, that that I don't think crowds actually understand the power they have over teams. They really do, like especially if the team is down and it's too all, too all, and there's that little bit of a bite left in it, and you need you need that pickup. It makes a massive difference. And obviously, some of those people who didn't turn up, there was reasons for it, but not two thousand of them. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's not that's not how how it works. Yeah. So uh, that aside, Ruth, all in all, a uh, fairly positive outcome in the end. I mean, look, clearly uh, goalkeeping issues, some defensive issues that need to be sorted mm -hmm. for the next game too. Yeah, I mean, we shouldn't shy away from that. Uh, it was after the howler from where you were and to concede that first goal like it was just a straightforward collection into the hands just seemed to take her eye off it or didn't seem to get her hands in the correct position behind the ball it bobbled in and they finish and the second goal then to make it 2-1 well, Megan Connolly an error in her part just didn't didn't connect with the clearance and, and they <laughs> they took full advantage of that um, so that's where my heart kind of sank because like I said we've seen those moments before and the fact they responded so well it's commendable but Vera Powell didn't hold back either. She said, look, we completely brought that in ourselves. Um, I would like people to, to not shy away from that. It was, they were two absolute huge errors, the first one in particular. And unfortunately, we've seen that before from our goalkeeper in big games. Like, that could have, you know, you don't want to underestimate it. That could have completely pulled the campaign apart. But it didn't. She did redeem herself in the final moment. She pulled off a crack and save to mm. keep the game at 3-2. Um, but that will leave that will leave some headaches for Powell. Does she want to stick with her? Does she want to look at Grace Maloney having a stellar season across the water? Do you think that um, had anything to do with the fact that the two goals that Ireland scored were so, such in quick succession? But I think sometimes when that happens, you can you can lose the run of yourself. You're like, oh my god, this is a this is a festival, and then you switch off for for, for a second, and, and stuff like that happens. Usually, if the goals are kind of you know first half, second half, you, you're on all the time. But I often feel in sport, you, you can get a bit too excited too quickly. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
I definitely don't think that's an excuse uh, mm. for the error, the, 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 the level that it was at in the, in the, in the first, certainly for the first goal, it was just a really straightforward selection um, for an had being involved in the game already at that point. Um, so it, I don't think it was a mental thing. I'm not sure what it was, but look, she'll deal with it, move on, and, and again, go into the next game. All right. Fair enough, Ruth. We'll leave it there. Thanks a million for joining us this morning. Thanks, guys. Have a great Cheers, day. Ruth. Talk to you later. Ruth, I give us some analysis on 3-2 uh, win for Ireland.